Sleep is meant to be easy. But it turns out sleep is actually pretty complicated and there's loads of science behind it, so I figured I'd do some research. Now I've got loads of notes on sleep already, but I figured just to make sure I go to YouTube, go to the top most popular videos about sleep science, and then just watch through those to make sure I'm not missing anything. Now when I'm watching YouTube videos, I'm not going in there expecting to get a deep scientific understanding and scientific backing behind the topic that I'm researching. Yes, there will probably be studies that are referenced in conversation, but the idea of watching YouTube YouTube videos and podcasts and things like that is to get a top level understanding. So the tips, the tricks, the hacks, the actual practicing work that people are doing to help them either, in this case, sleep better or sleep in a certain position or what to avoid, what to try and do, just to get a, an overall understanding of what is going on. Now, when I'm watching these videos, I'm going to note down all of the points, even if the point has been mentioned in the previous video or the previous podcast, I'm still going to note it down. So when I'm processing it, I can actually see there's a synthesis. So when that point suddenly appears in my working notes, I can see, oh, I've seen that in three different videos or four podcasts or whatever it is. So all the points are brought down so I can then create synthesis or in some cases critique because there may be a video that says something, another video that says something else and a podcast that actually contradicts both of those points. So I want to see all of those different points in my big working page and I use those as references. So each video, each podcast, each source is a reference for the point and all of those references all of those highlighted points go into normally one main page when I'm starting a topic in this case sleep is not a choice that's the name of the top level page all of the highlighted points are going into it and then in a minute I'm going to go through all of those and then actually condense some of these ideas into something that's a little bit more coherent and put into something that we can actually use now once I've either done a binge watch of loads of stuff around a specific topic or I've accumulated lots of different research around a topic over a long period of time the notes as you'll see in the time-lapse right now they are processed so a note on the left a capture note on the left the reference is being essentially pulled apart into all of the different points and put into a page now most of these points are just being transferred straight over into a page but once that page once that topic is fleshed out and there's more working notes the points are actually spread out all over the place and because of the way I'm going to process my notes in a minute you will see that that reference even though it's only one at the moment as a link to that capture note will multiply it will suddenly expand out and that original capture note will have way more than one link now many of you and probably most of you know that research is a long process it's not something you just do over a day or two days or even a week it's often months and years into research and I am only doing a very surface level research into what sleep is enough for me to have a justified a formulated opinion a justified hypothesis around what it is that I do the actions I take the things that I can apply to my own life and then sharing them with you guys now the process of fleshing this out and bringing the points together is my actual learning process because I'm revising as I go through, I'm actively recalling the notes I've made, I'm going through this over a long period of time using space repetition because I have to remember what I've thought about, how that links with other things that I've made, and then using other memory techniques because I'm linking different ideas together, I'm making notes, I'm using lots of things together to help my understanding around this one topic area, which in this video is sleep. So this video, even though it is one now, I will probably do one in the future with a condensed version of all my thoughts in one specific way but in the next few sections I don't really know what's going to happen because I haven't recorded it yet and I don't know where the learning points are so uh, let's get to it and see what I find out. So when I started going through these notes, I had one big note called sleep is not a choice and there were loads and loads of points in that note and then I had a couple of other notes that I had already made before doing this big research dive and I was using all of those different notes and I made other notes as well while I was going through this and put the points that I thought were related in another sort of like sub note. So I actually started building out other notes that are smaller than the main note but they were more condensed around a specific idea. So for example, factors affecting sleep quality was something that was just coming up regularly over and over and over again, lots of different factors. Most of the time those factors were repeated. So that became a note. And what I will then do in the future is condense those points. So if the same point came up multiple times, I just put the point down as one note. And then all of those other capture notes, so the things I originally came with, they would then be the references. That's the blue text you can see on the screen. Now, because my 
research at this point hasn't really gone into any academic articles. The YouTube videos, the shorter YouTube videos, gave me tips and tricks, and they were very small, obvious things that most of us already know, but I've written them down, and they will probably be condensed into one working note. I think it's going to be sleep hygiene or something similar. Then the longer videos, the longer podcasts actually went into more detail, and those sources are where I actually found more information about what sleep is and how things happen. And, and what I'm also going to mention is I'm recording this audio after having processed these notes, and I've actually consumed other pieces of information that critique some of the things that I've seen and heard in some of those shorter videos. So I'm going to put all of that together now and try and get some actual conclusions from all of these points that I've started to gather. Now I got carried away and did more research than I thought into a lot of the critiques, so it's actually two days after having recorded that time lapse. Now while I'm processing these notes and turning these highlighted points into working notes normally two or three sections long, there are different points that I'm actually moving out of notes that I had put them in two or three different times and moving them around. And what I'm doing is I'm creating essentially a format where I can go into any note and I can jump off anywhere. So it's not like I have one place to go like I started with, I just had that one big note. All of the notes that I'm making suddenly become their own jumping off platform. What this means is I can go into any of these notes and find any other related note that I want to find either when I'm working in the notes like right now or when I'm coming back to this in future. And something that helps me work through these notes is the local graph view. Now I know there can be uh, some debates about how useful it is, but for me, because I have the different colors in there, I can be in one of those notes that I've made and I can see the dark blue colors and the dark blue notes are processing notes. So I know they're notes and ideas that I still need to work on, I still need to flesh out. And in the same sense, if there are orange notes, I know a lot of the ideas around the note that I'm currently active in, I can see the ideas around it are fleshed out and I can see where the links are. And then the neighboring links allow me to see what ideas have been connected, what ideas could be connected, and how I actually use this isn't, oh, there's loads of links there, it's, okay, that point over there isn't linked to any of these other links, there's no neighboring links for that note, so what is it doing there? That then gives me a start off point to go explore whatever that note actually is. And something else I use the local graph view for is the green point. So the green nodes are references and I, I can see straight away by looking at the graph, oh, there's only one or two green nodes in there. I need more references. I need more research. I either need more synthesis, more critique, or I just need to have a look at what this note is actually saying as to whether I need to have a look at it further rather than just leaving it as a bit of a reaching statement. And just as a little bit of clarification, yes, I could look at all the footnotes I have in a page, but some of those footnotes are actually my own blog journals, so they're yellow nodes inside the graph view. And I could have five or six footnotes, but they're all from me. They're all my own original thoughts, so there's no synthesis or critique from any outside sources, which is why I look for those green nodes in the local graph. Now, while I've been working in these notes kind of off camera, there's a couple of things that I just thought I'd notice and let you know is the first thing is you can see here, this is a page that hasn't been made. And what I've done is I've changed it very slightly. So when I make this new page, you can see here's that new page. If I come back here, it's now purple. So previously it was orange and I could just see that it wasn't made. So if I open up my folders, you can see there it is. It hasn't been filed yet, but I was actually losing it slightly in here. So what I've decided to do is now make it purple. So you can see that. That's that new note, it's purple, and I can see that I haven't made it now when I move it. So control M, move, processing, it's now moved to the processing folder. I go back into here, and now that purple has gone. The next thing I want to mention is these notes are actually turning out to be extremely similar. So instead of just making two notes that are basically identical, what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these notes together. Now you can see there are loads of links currently in this note and even more links in this note. And I'm currently fleshing this one out. And I think this one is going to be my main note. So what I'm going to do is go into good sleep hygiene guidelines, go into my command palette find my note composer and then combine the notes together. So you can see now when I scroll down, that is the top of the note that I was currently in, the, the good, uh, what was it, good sleep hygiene note. And that is the good hygiene note there. It's just been put at the bottom of this note so I can carry on working through. All the links are now in here and everything that was the good hygiene note is now factors that affect sleep quality. The thing is, sleep hygiene is a term that's been used quite a lot, and I don't want to completely disregard the term, and I still want it there for when I'm referencing this note elsewhere. So instead of just having sleep hygiene or factors that affect sleep quality, I'm going to have both of them. So I'm actually going to make an alias. So when I am connecting these notes together, I can either pick from factors that affect sleep quality or the alias, which is going to be sleep hygiene.
Skip forwards a few days. Accessing academic articles is the best way to actually justify and find some reasoning behind everything else that you've heard, but I don't want to go looking in academic articles straight away because I don't know the questions. Now that I do know some of the questions I want to have a look at, I've gone and found some academic articles. So you can see on my screen here we have a PDF that I've downloaded from uh, a resource, and I've then gone in using Adobe Acrobat and highlighted different points throughout it. The reason there are different colours is because they are next to one another. That's literally it. So I wanted to highlight that as a point and that as a point, and because in Adobe Acrobat you can't just separate the two lines, I've just put them in different colours so I can easily differentiate between the two different points. And as you can see, what I've done in Obsidian is I then made uh, an associate note basically and this one is the exact same thing it says PDF this one has the actual name and what I've done is I've used the same the same template as all of my capture notes but the source instead of it being a link elsewhere it's actually the PDF so I can go back to the PDF both of which are stored in my obsidian vault and what I've done is I've gone through so this is essentially uh, all the points and I've condensed all of these all of these highlighted points in this in this article I've condensed them into words that I understand and into brief paragraphs and points through here and then what I'm going to do is put all of these in the notes that I'm currently sorting through right now and you can see what I've actually done if I turn this in there I've actually grabbed a couple of the images from the article that I can then move around in my space and put them in multiple places rather than just having them in the PDF so uh, I'm gonna get to that so about eight days into this sort of mini research project and I've got to a point now where I have lots of formulated opinions around certain areas certain topics certain factors and I've dived deep into into quite a lot of areas but there is a point in research where you have an answer you have a formulated opinion but there are still more questions and anyone in research knows that when you actually go into research you will always come out with more questions than you do answers so I'm at a point now where I have lots of answers to questions that I think are good enough but could certainly do with more and what I actually found is through through this eight week cycle through this eight week cycle through this eight day cycle eight weeks would be lovely to research this through these eight day cycle some of the people I looked at at the start of this research dive I thought these people know what they're talking about and then towards the middle of it actually there's some question marks around how much I can trust them some creators on YouTube some of the people sharing things in books there there's some questionable things that they've said there they're over exaggerating certain things and leaving out important nuances in some of the aspects of sleep which I'll go through in a second so it just shows that even in seven eight days of research you can take some big leaps and turns through who you trust what you trust and what you really need to look into and actually deep dive into when it comes to finding advice online. I will say that all the research I do is completely free online. They're just in podcasts, in blogs, in articles, in videos. There's, there's no paywall to any of the stuff that I find. Now, as I'm recording this, Obsidian are obviously putting in updates, and one of the recent updates in the Insider program, anyway, in the, you can see, 12.15, is you can actually search through words, and this is actually something that I've just seen going through my start notes. I have this. And this is not a page. This is me making a mistake with my referencing. I just didn't put the actual thing in there. But this is a new feature. So because I've copied and pasted things over, I can highlight this word. I can right click and then search for this. So I'm going to search for it. And there it is. There is the actual video that it was. Was it a video? Uh, no, it wasn't. It was it was a podcast episode or a podcast video between Tom and Adam. So I've actually just been able to search this this term in here, which I could have done in the search feature, but instead of having to write it or copy and paste it in, I can just highlight, right click, and it's a very nice added feature. Just thought I'd mention that. So you can see I've gotten all my notes on sleep page and what I'm doing is I'm dragging all of the notes that I think are appropriate for the video, the conclusion, the essay, whatever, and dragging them all over to that page to actually explain whatever it is that I'm going to talk about, in this case, sleep. Now there are a couple of occasions when I was outlining all of these different points that I actually thought of some links. So alcohol negatively impacts sleep and what I was going through, I was obviously putting alcohol and caffeine, uh, the two different effects in there. Well, what I realized is caffeine's effect on sleep is kind of the opposite to alcohol because of the way that they both interact with adenosine which is what actually impacts our sleep cycle alcohol increasing the adenosine levels making you fall asleep but under sort of a, a sedation decreasing REM sleep quality obviously affecting sleep and then caffeine which affects adenosine in the other way because it actually prevents adenosine which keeps you awake so it still affects sleep quality but in the opposite way
And another link I thought of was dreaming and nightmares. Now my original note was how the environment mainly affects whether you have a nightmare or night terror or dreaming and how dreaming isn't actually related to sleep quality. If you remember a dream it doesn't mean if it was uh, it was a good night's sleep or a bad night's sleep. There was there was no relation that I could find there. But I know that stress levels affect sleep, so nightmares aren't necessarily something that causes bad sleep, but they could be a symptom of bad sleep because you're going to have nightmares if the environment is triggering some sort of stress hormone or stress response. So I thought, you know what, let's add that link in there. Okay, so the final in-progress working note uh, is, is sort of done, and essentially what this is, so you can see down here in the local graph, what this is, is this is the accumulation, this is the bottom-up note-taking of all the things that I've consumed over the last eight days or so uh, about sleep. Now, these go all over the place. Some of these are just sleep-related. You can see there are those points, whereas some of them actually go into other topic areas. So some of them go into environments, go into communication, go into human anatomy, go into physiology. So even though it is sleep-related, I've diverted in lots of different directions. And for those of you following me on Twitter, you will see that I've gone real deep into some areas, specifically the eye, looking at different types of cells that receive light in different ways because that's where some of the research went and you can also see in the local graph over here blue so sleep supplementation it's a progress it's still a progressing note because there's still information in there if I click it open you can see there's still stuff in here that I need to go through uh, and I'm not going to say okay I'm only going to do this video when I've got all of these orange notes because I'm always going to be processing I'm always going to be adding things and that is the thing about these projects these finished projects these summarized projects is that there's always going to be something to add. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through all of these and summarize some of the points that I found. Now, before I do that, I do want to say that Matthew Walker's book was referenced a lot in YouTube videos. And I'm not saying the book is a bad read, but when you look at the scientific research, some of the scientific studies that have been done, the book either overlooks them or it cites them slightly incorrectly and does actually quote some people that just didn't say what he said they said. So the trustworthiness of the book was obviously decreased. And he even says that the book is scientifically accurate, which has actually been proven by lots of different people that it's not. So a lot of the videos that were citing his information, the, the videos aren't necessarily wrong, but some of the reasoning behind it, some of the nuance behind the information he was sharing wasn't totally accurate, so I went elsewhere. What this means is each reference is an individual reference. It's not a video repeating the same point another video said. It's a reference from either another article or another book or another original source. Now I've just recorded me summarizing those notes and the summary was 40 minutes because I have so much stuff going on in my head and there are so many things to explain when it comes to sleep and this is why sleep research is such a massive topic, massive area. So instead of going through all of the points, all of the notes, what I may do in another video, let me know in the comment section below if that's something you're interested in and I may share my notes publicly on Obsidian Publish but we will see how that goes. If I do, I will leave that in the link in the description below. So... Until next week, get off YouTube and do something productive with your time instead.